Okay, next let's talk about the cytokines, which are known as interferons. Interferon alpha and interferon beta go together. They mediate the same kind of response. Interferon gamma works similarly, but has some additional effects. In general, the interferons increase resistance to viruses. And you can remember this with the mnemonic, the interferons interfere with viruses. The alpha and beta interferons inhibit viral protein synthesis and activate an RNase that degrades viral RNA. Interferon gamma increases the production of MHC class 1 and MHC class 2 in cells that are able to produce these molecules. Remember that all nucleated cells in the body are able to produce MHC class 1 molecules, and this allows them to present on their surface either normal self-peptides or other pathogen-derived peptides, such as those coming from viruses. MHC class 2 molecules, on the other hand, are found on antigen-presenting cells. Again, the main ones being dendritic cells, our most potent antigen-presenting cell, macrophages, and B cells. Finally, the interferons generally activate NK cells and make them better killers of virally infected cells. From the previous slide, you might have also noticed that interferon gamma generally activates macrophages. And this allows them to better phagocytose and destroy viruses. So you can see that in general, the interferons are really specialized in the attack against viruses. I'm just going to briefly describe some of the molecular details of this response. But really, the high yield points are here. This is what you need to know. But in any case, I'll say, when interferon alpha or beta is bound by its receptor on the cell membrane, at least two things happen. This results in a signaling pathway that, as I mentioned before, activates an RNase. And this, of course, will degrade viral RNA. The other thing that happens is that a kinase known as protein kinase R where the R actually stands for viral RNA, becomes activated. When protein kinase R is activated, it actually phosphorylates eukaryotic initiation factor 2 alpha, which is actually needed to initiate translation. Thus, in the presence of viral RNA, protein kinase R will actually stop ribosomal translation in a host cell, which of course viruses depend on for the production of their viral proteins. So you can see that this is sort of an elegant way that the cell shuts off its own ribosomal production, where the cell shuts down its own translation to prevent the production of more virus.